There you go. People want to denigrate the work of zoos, but if it wasn't for zoos, then uh, this animal would be a lot more endangered than it is at present, which is inda quite endangered enough. Of course, when it comes down to it, a lot, of, a lot of people think that there are too many human beings, that they'd like to cut back the human population to just, you know, maybe one in 12 of what there is today. We actually, to this week, we went past the seventh billion, the seven billionth human being on the planet. Hello, congratulations if you're listening, if you're the seventh billion, seven billionth. Um, nice to see you here. Uh, not for everybody though, unfortunately. For some people, they think that seven billion is far too many, that the correct number is something like um, only uh, 500 million. So that would be one in 14. So 13, unlucky for some, out of 14 people, um, they, these people regard, people like the folk who did the Georgia Guidestones, for instance, and said that the human population should only be um, half a billion and not seven billion. Um, these, uh, these people would like to take 13 out of 14 of us and get rid of them. How exactly they propose to do that, well, they won't be very upfront about, will they? That's clear. And now we're coming back down by the place where I saw the uh, maned wolf getting fed earlier. And the only thing I just want to add to that, the wolves are over there, which we also saw. The only thing to add is I think this this idol here to Radhost or Radhost or whatever the name of it is. I suppose that's a heathen god, some version of the devil, no doubt, some recipient of idolatry. And uh, that's what the people serve that want to reduce the human population to such a small number. The human population it's not supposed to be only 500 million when God said be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth he didn't say, you know uh, stop, when you get to 500 million stop or there'll be too many of you he didn't say anything like that so 7 billion is what we've got and 7 is a nice biblical number so maybe, you know, we're not far now from the full plan probably God's going to end everything quite quickly now I don't know, but it's up to him, isn't it, how he does it it's not up to me, it's not up to you. So, um, we've got our seven billion, um, and yeah, our job is to make sure that we put our resources into making sure that every other species which God made, every kind, is looked after. And that means not returning them to the wild. There is no real wild per se. We're everywhere, and we were supposed to be everywhere, but to have them in lovely places where they can be looked after, where they can be enjoyed, and where we can understand more about creation by studying them, looking at them, and interacting with them in a kind way so that they can live without fear in conditions much, much nicer than they would have to put up with in the so-called wild. The wild was then, this is now, okay? We have now... Um, it's not that the human population should be small. The human population is 7 billion because it should be 7 billion. Okay? But we need more zoos. We need more people committed to giving over land, resources, investment, to looking after species, to giving them space, and what have you. And we, there's still plenty of space and plenty of resources to do this with so that species don't have to go extinct but people going on about zoos not being the right thing they just don't help matters at all they just get in the way of what needs to be done Zoo, bad zoos of course need to be stopped but zoos where the animals are happy where they're breeding where they're replenishing that's definitely similar to the work of very righteous people in the Bible like Adam who named the animals and studied them like Noah who rescued them from the flood nothing uh, about well managed zoos which is against the uh, plan of God at all not at all these are Noah's arcs looks like a black buck 
Would I be right there? I'm going to check. These are animals that can get quite moody when people come up to them and film them. Antilope havrana. So, sable antelope, okay. Not a black buck, sable antelope. It says, rapen antelope, chornea antelope. So what the difference is between this Hippotragus niger and a black buck, I don't know, but they call it the sable antelope here. Perhaps the black buck has a different shape horn or something, or different markings. I'm not sure. Anyway, that's called the sable antelope. And a lovely thing it is too. It's supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Well, actually it's not. It's uh, Cipotragus niger. Right. Now we're coming to the bit where if you go down there you come to the African uh, thing. If I don't film everything today and do film the rest uh, later, then it will be... Well, look, I think I've probably managed getting down there to that. Whether I'll get the other... Well, whether I'll get everything, I'm still in doubt. And uh, as I say, I'm not even particularly attempting it at the moment. Just to tell you what I mean about this, I didn't film that bit because there's like a building site going on down here as well. I think they're making a new elephant house. Here, at this point, the, uh, it resembles London Zoo a bit because it goes over the road. If we go up onto a wooden ramp and the footpath goes over the road, as it were, um, to get to the African area, which seems to have been added on at a later date to Prague Zoo um, than its initial inception anyway. Um, just to make, come back to my point about the uh, about the seven billion, we've now got seven billion people this week. It's crossed over from six point nine etc billion to seven billion, according to the population clocks that there are around the place. There seem to be, you know, the consensus seems to be that we're in seven billion this week. So basically, we're now. At 7 billion doing more to conserve animals than we ever were at 500 which is what these Georgia Guidestone folks and other Masonic types want to have as the population. So answer me that Illuminati. How are you going with only 600 or 500 million people to do all of this work of conservation that we can do with 7 billion people? And the thing is we've been there we've had a situation where we've had only um, 500 billion people. Did that help the animals on the planet? Well, of course it didn't. The uh, species were becoming extinct then more regularly than they are now. Quaggers and dodos didn't become extinct when we had 7, million, 7 billion. They didn't become extinct when we had 1 billion people on the planet. They became extinct when we had something more like the good old half billion that you people want. And yet things like quaggers and dodos were going extinct then because of carelessness. If you care properly, then it wouldn't matter if we had double the people that we have. It doesn't matter if we have 14 billion. But if we run things and organise them properly and have proper education and proper allocation of resources, which means a fair allocation, not the sort of thing the Illuminati want to give us, uh, then the natural world has very little to fear. Uh, whereas 500 million careless people, egoistic people, uh, that think they can do what they like and it doesn't matter because there's fewer of them and just the elite survived, well, that wouldn't be a good news for the planet at all. Red River hogs down there, I think I'll go down and look at them. Actually, this is the end, isn't it? I'm going to come back and do Africa again and I'll do the Indonesian jungle again later on. We're not going to do it all today. Um, so, here we are in the African house. I'm not even going to see it properly. I'll show you it next time. Um, but it was nice to have you along. I'll go and have a look at it again, but I won't be able to film it. So well, that was it for today, I think. Second part, and then third will be whenever I next have a chance to come to Prague at the weekend or stay over in Prague at the weekend. And like I say, I'm not going to push it. Even if the next time will be in the middle of winter, I shall come along. Because what's been left is actually a lot of indoor stuff, which I specially did, so that even if the last time, the third and last um, film of Prague Zoo will be... Even in the winter I'll still be able to see a meaningful amount and maybe also there'll be fewer people. Um, not that the people bother me, but uh, 
it can be a little bit easier to look at a zoo if there are fewer folk around, although that's all part of the fun is to see the people as well, of course. So, thanks for that, and see you again in Prague Zoo whenever the occasion arises. Yeah, I still had enough battery space for one more, but I'll do this again next time anyway. Hi, do you want to come and see me? Oh dear, did you just snot up you two? Oh, I'm glad I got that on camera. That's something that doesn't happen every time you look at these. Is this a Guantanamera? Let's have a look. Nearly. Guanaco. Guanaco Bay. Okay. This really is the end now. I don't think. I'll get past this on my battery. But honey badgers or ratels are a perennial favourite. I couldn't resist trying that one. And there's also something very active down here which I don't suppose it'll even let me get to before it switches off. Fennec foxes, are they? Ah, long-eared dogs. Oh, isn't that lovely? You could almost stroke them. Very playful animals. Aren't they nice? You just want to play all day, don't you? You play all day if they let you. Strangely enough, this keeps letting me film a little bit more, which is good because this snapping turtle, you can just see how how his tongue there is like just a little worm that's going, like moving across a rock. Of course, if the fish comes in, the turtle feels the fish going by, it will snap shut with the force that can break a broom handle. And just take that fish, uh, either a big bite out of it if it's a big fish, and it'll probably die and get collected by the turtle later on, or just swallow it whole. But it's amazing how that tongue there is, which is constantly moving, while the rest of the tortoise turtle is completely immobile. How small that is and how much it resembles a little pink worm in the middle there. I don't know if you can see it. But uh, just just for all the world, like a little pink worm trying to move across a rock. One of nature's wonderful things.